Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Timothy Adon, back again with another instructional video on incorporating WISE into Unreal. Last time, what did we do last time? That's right, uh, we, we did RTPCs and attenuation in the last video. And at the end of the last video I said I was going to talk about uh, switches, probably for footsteps and such. And I will do, I will still do so, however, uh, they were actually a lot easier than I thought, and mostly because there actually is really good instruction online already on how to do those. So I will put the link for that in the description below. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. Uh, and it is a text description if that is, your, is, if that is something that fancies you. If not, I will also be talking about it briefly at the beginning of this video. The main portion of this is going to be talking about reverb. Uh, and the room components or the, uh, the the spatial audio volumes that are integral to that. Before I continue, I must say uh, in between the last video and this one, I updated versions. So in the last video I was working off of Unreal 4.16 and now I am working off of 4.18.3 and my WISE version is now 2017.2.3. And I did that because in figuring out how to do reverb, I just, uh, a lot of the instructions were talking about things that I had no idea what they were or how they worked or even where to get them. And that's because I was in the wrong version. So I updated my entire project, both the WISE project and the Unreal project to the more recent versions so that I could have the new Wise Toys to play with. So first thing we are going to go ahead and talk about are the, uh, the Wise switches. And I'm not gonna say it's easy. It does actually require a fair amount of, uh, of blueprinting as you can see here. But uh, the instructions that I found were very easy to follow. And again, I'll try to put those up on the uh, in my description so that you can follow along with those, but I will also do my best to replicate that here. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to project settings. I'm going to do this uh, basically as a uh, almost verbatim of the instructions I found online in case you don't feel like reading through it. So you'll open up project settings, you're going to go down to physics, and then you're going to go down all the way to almost the bottom and you're going to put in the materials for the footsteps. That's what I'm going to talk about today is using switches for footsteps. In this case, it's tile, metal, grass, and concrete. And I'm not even using all of those. Right now I'm just using tile and grass. Uh, but you can still set up the rest of them. Once you have that done, you will want to go and create physical materials. So right click, physics, physical material. For each of those object, for each of the materials you just created in project settings. And these, you will just go in, you can, you can change their, their phys, actual physical properties, which is pretty cool when you're actually uh, doing more blueprinting and physics stuff in the game. But for now, we just want these as a setup for our for our audio. So you just want to go down and you want to uh, assign these to the materials that you put in your project settings. That's what this drop down menu is uh, uh, made up of. It's everything that you put in the project settings physic types. Once you've done that, you're going to go to the, uh, well, actually, it's probably easier for me to show, to show it to you this way. Rooms, generated rooms, room one. So here's one of my randomly generated rooms, the tile flooring. Um, the material texture, which I have opened up right here. This is the blueprint for the texture. Um, you just want to go under the physical material and then again, assign the material type that you created into this slot and you want to do that for all of your physics types so grass concrete I don't have a metal yet nor do I am I using anything that has metal so I'm not doing that right now 
And once you have all of that set up, you are then gonna create this script. And essentially what this script is doing is on every tick, it's gonna get the player location and it's gonna determine what surface type it is sitting on. And if the surface type, and it's if, if there happens to be a return value, then it just goes through the rest of this. If it doesn't, then it doesn't do anything. Um, once it gets the surface type, I should really silence my phone. Man, I am just popular today. Like, you have no idea. Um, once it gets the surface type, it's going to try to match. Uh, this is a check and balance to make sure that it doesn't overload the system. It's going to check once to see if you're on a different surface type than what you're standing on. Um, if it's the same surface type, nothing happens. That way it doesn't keep on infinitely changing what surface you're on to the same thing. And then if it's a different uh, surface type, it changes the surface. And then uh, all the way down here, it will set the switch in wise to which floor material you, you are using, which is set up under share sets. No, sorry, game syncs. Uh, as a switch group with different switches for each of the material types. And so now that I have that set up, um, this is the concrete. I actually don't have a recording for concrete right now. Uh, and and there's also a, uh, a string that gets printed when you change material types. The next thing that we're going to talk about today is reverb. And reverb is a little bit of a big subject for me. I did a lot of research, most of that on how to get each of my little rooms to have its own separate reverb, uh, and ended up running into a whole bunch of other things that I think are very, very cool, but a little bit more complex than I want to deal with right this moment. So probably in the next video, I'll get to things like spot reflectors, acoustic textures, and uh, first reflections and things like that. But for right now, I just want to deal with basic rooms and standard reverb, or late reverb as it's labeled in here. Now, onto the subject of having a reverb for each of my randomly generated rooms, uh, it can't happen, or at least not right now. So as far as the Unreal Engine is concerned, you cannot place volumes on game objects that get spawned into the world not without a heavy level of scripting that I don't know how to do. So for now, we're just gonna settle with having one reverb for the whole area, the whole map, and then one reverb for the starting room. So to get this set up, we're gonna go to Wise first. You need an auxiliary bus for every reverb that you want. Um, I have three set up here, we're only gonna be using two. One for the starting room, and one that's labeled the power room, but it's for the rest of the map. For each of those, put whatever effects that, it, that you want on those auxiliary buses. And just make sure that they are set to 3D positioning. And in the documentation, it says that attenuation for these is also very important. However, I have not seen a reason for it yet. That is going to be something else that I do research on for the next video. And then in order to make sure that the reverbs actually get used, you want anything that's going to use these reverbs set to use game-defined auxiliary sends. This means that if this sound is triggered inside of a reverb volume, that it will trigger said volume and it will get routed through that bus. Anything that you do not want to use that, just have checked off. So my, my random, uh, well, it's called an ammo pickup here, but it's just a power-up sound, um, will not use game-defined auxiliary sense. Once you have that set up, you want, to set, you want to place all of your auxiliary buses into your sound bank. Go ahead and gener save and generate, and then we can move on over to the game. Once you're in the game, uh, I'm using AK Spatial Audio Volumes. 
They have more functionality, gives you the reverb, rooms, spot reflectors, things like that. However, if you don't need all of that, just the standard reverb volume will do. It has the same functionality. You'll find the same buttons. It's just missing some of the extra control. So take your spatial audio volumes, place them where you want them. I have my starting room reverb over the starting room, as you might think. And then the other reverb I have spanning the entire thing overlapping this. So once you have those set up, first thing you're going to want to do in case this is important for you is uncheck generate overlap events. This is set to on by default and it confused the ever living crap out of me for a long time. And by a long time, I mean like an hour because my projectiles, when they fire, get destroyed on overlap with anything. So the reverb zones were destroying my projectiles before they were even firing. And that was super obnoxious. And for the longest time, I thought it was the collision presets. After that, you're going to move all your way down to the late reverb. This is the important part for right now. You want to make sure that the under the auxiliary bus setting, it's using the auxiliary bus for the reverb that you want. So in this case, I have the big spatial audio volume. I really should rename these. Uh, set to use the power room reverb, while I have the small one using the starting room reverb. And then right below here is another part that's very important, is priority. So in this case, I have two reverbs overlapping each other. What happens when you have a sound inside of both volumes? In this case, it's going to get routed to the auxiliary bus that has the highest priority. Highest. So, you know, it's not going to go in numerical order. It's going to be whichever one has the higher number. So in this case, I have the starting room set to priority two, so that if you're in the starting room, then the reverb you use is the starting room reverb. Below that, you have a similar thing for uh, room priority, which is not going to matter right now, but it might in the future. And then wall occlusion. Down here, we're going to go on down, make sure that surface reflectors are turned off because we're not going to need them quite yet. But we will be using late reverb, and for today we will be using the room, although that's also not terribly important, but it's a fun thing to check out for right now. So rooms are a little peculiar, and that's what the acoustic portals are for. The portals are there so that if a sound occurs in one room, that sound will bleed into any rooms connected to it. And so the acoustic portals are there as connectors between reverb, reverb rooms. And it's important, let me see, how do I have this set up right now? Okay. Um, and then the portals also have facings, which I'll get to in a second. I have these ones purposely facing the wrong way so that I can show you what happens with the rooms. So notice, the sudden cutoff of the sound when it crosses the threshold. You can hear the reverb, and that's cool, but you'll notice that the main body of the sound cuts off right across the portal. And that's because when the sound crosses the portal, it's in a different room. And if it's in a different room, and there's no portal to connect it, then... Um, wow, I broke for a second. If it go, if if a sound occurs on, in another room and there isn't a portal to connect it, then the occlusion starts to take over and tries to find another path, which unfortunately is too far to reach the portals that are working. Actually, an easy way to test this out is to just go over here. There you go. Also, there. Power up sound, not using reverb. Um, so, in order to get in order to get that to work, you have to use acoustic portals, and acoustic portals have a facing. So let me just fix these really quick, and then I'll show you. Acoustic portals have a facing. If you see this yellow line, that is the front and back of the acoustic portal. And so you have to make sure that not only is the acoustic portal overlapping the reverb zones that they are supposed to connect, 
but that the facing of the doorway is what it's supposed to represent is also facing the right way so that the sound bleeds through correctly. And so now this makes it so that if a sound occurs anywhere, that sound will bleed through the doorway as if it were an actual door. And then to also simulate an actual door, I'm fairly certain that in scripting, you can have these set to open and closed. If it's closed, sounds will not bleed through, except through, you know, normal acoustics, which I think you can set up, but I will not do today. Uh, open means that it is completely open and sound should travel through freely. Also, similarly, I believe these also start, yeah, reset to default. Default is generate overlap events. Just make sure that's turned off if you don't want it there. And at least for today, that's all there is that I'm going to talk about for reverb. Uh, as mentioned before, I'm going to do a lot more research into the other spatial audio uh, things that you can play with, but that's going to take me a little bit more time. Until then, uh, absolutely feel free to ask me any questions. If there is anything you want me to do a video on, like a specific functionality, and it's something that I can research and put together and put a, make a video out of, I will absolutely do so. Otherwise, I'll answer your question to the best of my ability. You can get in touch with me through my website, which I will link below, as well as my Twitter, which is at Timothy Adon. Until next time, I will talk to all of you later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.